Star Citizen's new concept ship, the Anvil Liberator, is potentially the best multi-role transport and light carrier that the game has to offer, and there is a lot going on with the ship. We've just had a Liberator Q&A going over a large range of questions, asked about the ship, and I want to talk about that post, put it all in a bit more context, and then talk about my opinions on that. So, what sort of capabilities will the ship have for refueling, repairing, and rearming the ships and vehicles it carries? The Liberator will only support basic levels of refueling, repairing, and rearming, which will be done manually by players on board using supplies stored in the cargo bay. It does not have dedicated facilities or separate stores. So, that sounds like no specialist facilities, you have to do it by hand, maybe having a Vulcan or Crucible support the ship in a fleet might be a good shout. This is much more for the transportation and protection and efficiency of the ships and vehicles on it, um, rather than to repair, rearm, and fuel them. Are the ships on deck shielded by the Liberator's shields? They are not explicitly protected by them, however, the shield projects a few meters from the ship's hull, so most ships would likely be at least partially covered by them. The same applies to the Kraken and any ships where vehicles are stored on the exterior. So um, if a ship pokes out of that shield, it's not covered. I would actually like to see shields or shield emitters that potentially are less effective overall, but maybe extend a shield slightly further out so that it maybe it would protect them. I think that would be cool to see. Another solution to this problem as well is, well, you could turn the shields on the ships that are on the pad. Why not? Just turn those, 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 turn those shields on. It also poses a more interesting meta question when it comes to fleet battles. Could um, you just cycle a ship so you could have a large ship um, that protects another larger ship by just poking out of its shield effectively or just going in front of it so that its shield's getting hit and then retreating behind the larger ship again so that they're sort of cycling shields and then regenerating like that. And that would be interesting to see if that is a thing. What is the larger ship that can be parked in each of the garages and pads on the ship? So the two garages internal at the back um, and the single front landing pad can store vehicles up to including the Tumble Nova and Anvil Ballista, and what they refer to as internally extra, extra small XXS ships, which include the Argo MPUV and Origin 85X. Now, I'm assuming this will be pretty much all snub craft, but it's also interesting because the size of those ships and vehicles suggests that, well, at least uh, a ship of 13 by 10 meters could fit, and well, that means you could get a M50 on, a C8 Pisces on, and looking at the concept pictures and the room they've got there, it does look to me like we could get an arrow on each of those internal pads, to, to me anyway. So it looks like the garages could each um, store an arrow and the front landing pad could have an arrow on, I think. And they said that the two upper landing pads support extra small ships, XS ships, um, which include most single-seater combat ships, so um, Age of Sabre, Anvil Hornet, and Arrow, etc. So they are explicitly mentioning the Arrow in the two larger pads, um, and any other single-player uh, ships, such as the Misk Prospector, should also fit there. So I already thought the ship was a solid light carrier, but the potential of being able to run five arrows has filled me full of joy. Please take into account here that that's a board gamer, I reckon, and they have said actually it fits smaller ships, but um, it looks to me like an arrow might fit there. Come on. And if not, you can still put a load of small ships on there, a load of your snubs. You get your 85Xs on there, you probably get your Pisces on there, get your M50s. You can fit them out to be little, little fighters if you want to go the full combat route running this as a pocket carrier rather than a transport ship. And that's what this ship is to a lot of people. It's a pocket carrier, but it can also have those ground vehicles, it can also have a load of troops, it can also have a load of cargo. It's super multi-role and has super utility. Can the Liberator transport one big ship on its um, upper decks, providing the latter can touch down with all of its landing gear? Officially, this won't be supported, as large ships won't be able to spawn there. But what players do after the initial spawn is up to them. So yes, if you can Tetris them on, you can, but that might not be the best way of utilizing the ship. Uh, what's the Liberator's armor like in comparison to the other military ships of its size? The Liberator packs medium and heavy armor to offset its relatively sparse weaponry and to allow it to take a beating while transporting vehicles. Does the 400 SCU of cargo capacity refer only to the internal cargo bays next to the garages? The 400 SCU refers only to the internal cargo base, which are the secured areas for cargo. 
what happens outside of that is up to the player, though it might not be supported via the full range of systems in game, such as not being mag secured. So your cargo may get damaged and, and that sort of stuff if it's not in the um, cargo area. What is the primary usage difference between the Liberator and the Hercules M2? The biggest differentiator of the M2 is that it is not specifically designed to carry spaceships, let alone multiple spaceships, which is the Liberator's key role. And this is actually not my favourite answer from Cloud Imperium, as I would have preferred them to um, talk about outlining the key difference in the two ships and how they play very differently. Actually, the Liberator just lets you do more is basically what they said, and I don't like that as an answer. There's obviously a lot of differences between the M2 and use cases between the M2 and the Liberator. It's uh, a much more focused, smaller scale vehicle transport, um, while also being more heavily armed, that M2. So sort of bear that in mind. Will there be any consideration to removing the spawning ship requirements when loading your own fleet? For example, when we spawn a third vehicle, the first vehicle um, will uh, um, be despawned, sort of thing, so you can't have too many out at once. Ultimately, yes, this will be removed. The current limits are there as a temporary measure. Are there any ways to lock down ships on the upper landing pad to prevent them from taking off? Let's say if someone's trying to escape or steal them. Uh, on the same topic, is there any way to forcibly detach a ship from an unwanted visitor? We don't have any specific details to discuss regarding the topic of security and potential griefing and how that interacts with this ship and other similar ones. But both the scenarios listed here are areas we will be discussing internally particularly how we wish to deal with them using the current and planned range of mechanics. The Liberator is described as having extreme range, but how does it endure compared to other carriers like the Kraken and Idris? The Liberator has extreme range by virtue of its capacity of its hydrogen and quantum fuel tanks compared to other ships of its size class. However, the Kraken and Idris are over double the size and as such have an even greater range. Can vehicles be driven up the ramp bay door and secured on the upper deck in place of fighters? This is possible, though not advised, as if the ramp and door becomes damaged, it will no longer operate, putting it out of commission. You must then only load and unload from the rear ramp until it's repaired. What are the two cylinders on the lateral side of each engine shown in the concept art? They have no function, they are just cool bits of geometry, apparently. Will the ship be able to traverse jump points with ships on deck. Yes, if a ship is landed on the deck, it will be carried with the Liberator during a jump. A point of note, um, the Liberator is not a capital ship as it's listed on the ship matrix. It has no capital components and although it's not the sole requirement of a ship um, to have capital components to be considered a capital ship, and though it does play a part, um, it is uh, listed as capital in error. It should be large. Where is the tractor beam mounted on the ship and can it be used to pull a uh, mobile ship onto the deck and then transport it off? The tractor beam is mounted in a deployable compartment in the passenger side under the remote upper turret. This allows it to have range over the external pads to aid with the landing and removal of ships. So it sounds like most likely you will be able to pull a ship uh, or small vehicle uh, onto the pad. We're not sure of the power of that tractor beam so we will have to wait and see. Does the Liberator offer any facilities to house the crew of the transported ships or vehicles? The crews of those transported vehicles have access to their own dedicated area of the ship, complete with food, services, lockers, storage, a bathroom, and a seating area. I absolutely adore the Liberator on paper. I think it's incredibly powerful, and some people might be crying power creep to some extent. And I think, potentially, in some areas, you might be right. The, the, the ship just does a lot of everything and it does it very well. To me, the Liberator is the um, best pocket carrier, best transport and uh, ship for um, sort of ground-based assaults and um, that, that sort of carrying um, small ships, carrying marines. It's got a huge amount of utility. For a medium or large org, this is going to be fantastic for assaulting ground targets or space stations, transporting their ships and vehicles, using as a mobile base, um, while also carrying cargo and marines. This is going to form the centerpiece of many small and medium engagements too, but we don't know when it's going to be in game because it's a concept and at the price of $500 currently, it's pretty expensive and probably only going to get more expensive. It's something that I will definitely own probably multiples of in game at some point. I do think it's made the C2 and M2 Hercules a bit less attractive as offerings. However, those ships do have a more focused um, sort of um, role and uh, they are more heavily armed, that sort of stuff. I mean, it's possible that it might not be able to take all those 
anvil arrows as I wanted. And those those three um, pads, the, the small front, the extra, extra small front one and the um, two garage ones. Maybe, maybe the arrow isn't appropriate for that. Um, I hope that it is, but maybe it's not. But you still get your M50s in there, your C8Xs and your P52s and, M and uh, P72s, the sort of X1 or the dragonflies and that sort of stuff. That, that's still going to make that pretty powerful. And then you can have the two um, sort of larger fighters uh, on top of the ship. But I think, yeah, maybe just running a swarm of M50s might be a laugh from this ship as well. I wish CIG had been a bit more specific on some of the questions there. I wish they had outlined exactly what was going on um, with comparisons between the Hercules and what was going on with exactly what size uh, ships will be able to fit in the internals. Um, but part of this, um, why they didn't answer all these questions, is because the ship's in concept and will evolve over time and may change a little bit. So some of the stuff is purposely vague because they go, you know what? Actually, we've built it out like this. There is going to be enough room for this ship here now. And once we have vehicle and ship spawning, I suppose if they've already defined the pads as extra, extra small in the internals, then you'll only be able to spawn ships that they define as that. So the arrow would be an extra small ship. So wouldn't be able to be spawned on those pads initially. You'd have to place them there yourselves. So bear that in mind as well. If you'd like to know more about the Liberator, I've got a dedicated video uh, talking all about its concept sale and stats, so go check that out. But what do you think? Do you like the Liberator? Are you going to be picking one up yourself? Has your Org got a load? Or are you more of a fan of the Hercules? Or don't you like these sort of ships uh, at all? What do you dream of it being able to carry? Are you going to be using this as part of a fleet? Um, are you hoping to be able to attack and loot other people's Liberators in the future? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Some people say I shill for NordVPN, but listen to some of these comments that I just made up. I've never fed the love of a woman before, but then I got NordVPN, and that didn't matter. Doctor said I'd never walk again, but then I got NordVPN. Now I've been running marathons. Also, I got robot legs around the same time. They might have helped somewhat too. Arr, I was a tone-deaf pirate, but after getting NordVPN, I'm able to play the saxophone. Go on, Zin, try and animate all of this. Click the links below to get NordVPN. It might lead you to a more fulfilling life, but more likely, it will just help protect you from the terrors of the internet. What ship are we giving away in October? It is one of the most exciting ships we've given away, and one of the most popular. It's the Argo Cargo. So many people liked it, we thought we'd give one away, instead of a Mercury Star Runner, or a Carrack, or something else. You can do fun things, like fly around a planet, or fly very slowly into the sun. And it also makes my top 16 ships that I liked in the ship showdown this year. Me and Zin are sort of on a holiday for a week, so we had to quickly film a ship giveaway, so we do have Citizen Con coming up, and we might have some other things going on on the channel that will make it worth your while commenting, so do what you want. I'm not your dad. You should definitely press the join button below my videos, though, and you should certainly like and subscribe and bell bother. Click on the bell. I don't know what it does, but it makes me money somehow. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Thanks very much for watching, though, and I'll see you in the next one.